안녕하세요. Good morning, good morning, my dear brothers and sisters, clergy and ambassador for peace. 안녕하십니까? Uh, today is my last recording uh, morning devotion. Yesterday, I was so happy to see my dear brothers and sisters by live. And today, we are going to have the victory celebration with the true mother. So we have a chance to meet our beloved true mother. I, will, I think everything will be okay. I think just I concern that we really, uh, really need to unite with true mother's leadership. All dear brothers and sisters completely one more, we need to have the re resolution to unite with the mother. And then we really need to achieve, you know, also need to realize our true parents' dream, uh, which is really substantial, you know, centering on heavenly Korea. Today, uh, I'd like to talk about the unity of the world and humankind's responsibility from True Mother's uh, Anthology Volume 2. Let's study. The unity of the world and humankind's responsibility. The tragedy of human history is that it originated with Satan, the Lord of evil, who took a position against God's ideal of creation. <clears throat> and with the marriage of Adam and Eve, who had become separated from God through the fall, inevitably, human beings inherited Satan's love, Satan's life, and Satan's lineage. The human reproductive organs by which husband and, husband and wife were created to join together in virtue were originally intended to be temples of true love, true life, and the true lineage. Love needs to be an experience in which a husband and wife join in a virtuous union to procreate children who will carry on the lineage. The center of life is love, and the human lineage is transmitted by means of the love and life of a husband and wife. The linkage of love, life, and lineage is what gives history its continuity. Since the fall, the human race has been held captive by Satan's love, Satan's life, and Satan's lineage. Adam and Eve were in their youth when they sowed the seeds of false love, false life, and false lineage. Thus, when the last days come, we can expect the increase of moral decadence among young people to expand into a global phenomenon. In fact, we live in such a time now. Satan has used fallen love as a condition to create a layer of sin in which a devastating blow could be struck against God's ideal of true love. With the relaxation of standards concerning sexual behavior, the increasing moral decay among young people and the plague of drug addiction in our societies, Satan has been able to work to destroy family structure and transition traditional values in order to turn this world into an earthly hell. Thus, it has become impossible to find anywhere a true man, true woman, true brothers and sisters, a true husband and wife, or true parents. Until now, there could be no hope of creating a true society, true nation, or true world. The world has to understand that Satan exists, that he has brought about the fallen reality we face today. With this knowledge, we can find the cause of the disease and uncover the origin of the fall. We must reveal to the world that Satan, Adam and Eve, formed a trinity of evil, and that it is up to us to restore the original trinity of God, Adam and Eve, that is in accordance with the ideal of creation. For this issue to be resolved, someone must testify to the fact that Satan committed sin and clearly explain the fundamental truth concerning the sin committed by our first ancestors. God and Satan have always known all the details about the fall. 
Yes. Due to the uh, due to the human fall, uh, we inherited false life, false love, and false lineage from Satan. Restoration means to recover and establish true life, true love, and true lineage from first life, first love, and first lineage. In other words, the fall changed God's royal blood lineage into lineage of the servant. When you receive the blessing from true parents of fallen human being, bring about a great transformation from servant's blood lineage to God's royal blood lineage. This is really, really important. Do you understand what I mean? Because of the fall, we became Satan's, you know, a blood lineage. And because of the blessing, we can recover to God's royal blood lineage. The original couple's institution of the love is the palace of true life, palace of true love, and palace of true lineage. Our eternal horizontal hometown is our parents' love organs. And our eternal vertical hometown is God's love organ. The reason the blessing is so precious is because we can recover our original eternal hometown. And the reason God is precious is because his love organ is the hometown of my eternal life and love and lineage. When the last day, the end of the fall, fall of Adam and Eve come, we can expect the lineage of the moral uh, decadence among young people to expand into global phenomenon. With the uh, relaxation of the standards of concerning sexual behavior, the increasing uh, moral decay among young people and the plague of drug addiction in our society, Satan has been able to work to destroy family structure and traditional values in order to turn this world into an earthly hell. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, you know, to solve this problem, humanity has to rebuild who God is and need to rebuild Satan's identity as well. We are very often talking about, we need to know God, we need to know God's identity, that's fine. Also, we, we, teach, really, we teach very clearly who true parents are. But our lack of education is, we did that much emphasizing the, the identity of the Satan. You need to know that where there is God, definitely there is a Satan. We really need to go about to clearly understand the identity of the Satan. Without knowing Satan's identity, we cannot distinguish good and evil. We must reveal to all mankind and spiritual world that Satan is the ancestor of our first life, first love, and first lineage. He's a first father. This is really incredible. True parents declare this point very clearly. We have to plainly reveal that Satan is behind all these problems of the you know, prostitution and drug addiction and free sex and family breakdown. And we have to let the world know about the root of the Satan and Adam and Eve committing sin. And we are talking about the same-sex marriage and free sex marriage and all kind of the issue, prostitution or, you know, many people stand using the word, we need to embrace them. That's fine. We need to embrace them. But the word is, looks like good, but you need to know that in behind, who are they? Who are they? Not just only embracing them. We need to really clearly teach our second generation, even third generation, any outside people who is in behind. We need to know that. This is a really, when you quarrel with your wife, your husband, with your children, with anyone, you need to know that who is in behind. 
where there is God and there is a Satan. You know, where you and you you you, you not need to love our enemy. Actually, we don't like we don't like to hate that person. But who is it behind? We need to know that Satan is in behind. That's what we need to teach very clearly the identity of the Satan. So that's why when we deliver, you know, divine principle and teaching divine principle very clearly, chapter one, God's existence. What is the relationship between God and me? Secondly, we, we need to teach very clearly what is the purpose of our, our life. We need to teach it very, very clearly. Spiritual world is reality. We need to teach one. And then chapter two, very much we need to emphasize Satan's identity. Satan does exist. You know, how much it will destroy the human being. And Satan, he's the one who destroy you, destroy me, destroy our ancestor. You know, this, we need to know about this point. And the restoration, you know, to restore, we need to have Messiah, Savior. Very clearly, we need to teach about it. And then through the, when we teaching the restoration course, one of the most important issues is what? What should we teach? The indemnity. The indemnity. Without paying indemnity, we cannot be the Messiah. Without uh, the paying the indemnity, I cannot go back to God's person. And then at the end, we need to teach very clearly who true parents are. My brothers and sisters, sometimes we are so much compromising here and there. And we, we sometimes forget the main point. Main point of the God. And main point of our, the spiritual world and Satan. And indemnity. We seldom teach about the indemnity. This is a really big issue. We need to teach very clearly. Next, the living divine principle and the heaven and hell. Let's just study EDP. Heaven and hell. It is not God who decides whether a person's spirit enters heaven or hell upon his death. It is decided by the spirit himself. Humans are created so that once they reach perfection, they will fully breathe the love of God. Those who committed sinful deeds while on earth become crippled spirits who are incapable of fully breathing in the love of God. They find it agonizing to stand before God, the center of true love, and choose to dwell in hell of their own will. Since the human spirit can grow only in the soil of the physical self, the multiplication of human spirits takes place at the same time that the multiplication of physical selves occurs during earthly life. Yes, I think based on this content of the EDP regarding heaven and hell, today's father's word is a very, very precious, very, very powerful content. Everybody, please listen carefully what he's talking about. Let's start. From where can the kingdom of heaven begin? From where can the kingdom of heaven begin? Without dissolving God's sadness, we cannot enter heaven. Since we have woven a history of sorrow since the fall, we must restore all its links to the fall. All the links to the fall over six millennia since Adam and Eve have to be restored. The Unification Church principle teaches about a God of such sorrow. Secular people detest sorrow and run away from it. The Unification Church principle teaches about God's sorrow, which is more miserable than any other sorrowful situation. The more you know God's sorrow, the stronger you will become. The secular world tries to avoid sorrow when it comes to them. But the Unification Church principle states that one must pass through the place of sorrow. All people in the world try to avoid sorrow. But humans are not originally supposed to be like that. The more we understand the sorrow of God, 
the stronger the power of the unification church becomes. As you understand more about God's sorrow, the explosive force that will release his anguish grows stronger and stronger. This is the great power of the unification church. I am so inspired by Father's word again and again and again. I think uh, no religion guide uh, you know uh, this kind of the way. Kingdom of heaven starts from knowing God's sorrow and liberating His sorrow. Therefore. The Unification Church leaders and the mission of the Unification Church are to clearly teach all people about the sorrowful God. I personally, what I what I am most grateful grateful to to the parents for is that he clearly taught me who God is, and he has sorrowful heart. This is really, for me, is always whenever I think about the true father, this is the most grateful, grateful point. Why true father is a true teacher? He's the one who taught me who God is and why he has a sorrowful heart. I'm really eternally grateful to our true father. And then Father is saying that the greater leader, the greater parent, greater teacher, and greater able one is the more one talks about God's sorrow and God's harm and tries to comfort him. That's why we need to try to experience God's sorrow. And we should cling on, cling, uh, cling on to God and shed many, many tears. As you understand more God's sorrow, the explosive force that will liberate his anguish and grows stronger and stronger. This is very important, my brothers and sisters. When you can get more power, what's the best way to get you to get the, uh, get the more power and become stronger and stronger? Father say that. You know, if you understand more about God's sorrow, the explosive force that will liberate his anguish grows stronger and stronger. Wow. If you really understand God's reality as the sons and daughters of the filial child, what do you think? Your own father's sorrow, or whether you need to think how to liberate him, how to make, make him happy. If day and night think as a filial child, father said, you can grow and then you can become stronger and stronger. I really get really strong power from this word. The great power of the unification church has is seeking to liberate God's sorrow. Only who, who can liberate God's sorrow? Who can release God's sorrow? Only one guy. Who is that? One who has a filial heart. One who has that kind of filial heart, I want to liberate God's sorrow. You know, spiritual world give you explosive force and power. I think through Father, how he maintained his first motivation, his first resolution, first determination, no matter what happens, because he always reminds God's sorrowful heart. Today's youth ministry, the attitude of the faith in the era of the channel Gu and how to raise people. Let's just study. A life of faith with freedom. We must carefully examine whether our life of faith is conceptual and habitual. Also, 
I need to reflect on whether I am living a life that is subject to the law of the word. Our original nature is always free from the law when we follow it with our heart. If I obey the law, regardless of whether it exists or not, and follow the law, regardless of who sees it or not, my heart will be at peace and I will not hesitate to do anything. Prayer vigils and fasting prayers can help those who are entering the faith. However, as the years of faith repeat, you must become free, not subject to the given law. You still feel consciously compelled to do something because you are still under the law. In the New Testament era, the Holy Spirit established relative standards with those who passed the law. Believers who had established relative standards with the Holy Spirit always had voluntary hearts that they evoked. So the Holy Spirit made them realize that their hearts belonged to heaven. Yeah. <clears throat> the things that the that the, the things that I hinder our original life the most is when we always live a conceptual, habitual, and conditional and self-centered life. Then how can we overcome all these uh, uh, hindering points? When our original mind voluntarily and genuinely wells up and we try to obey the law of the world, we gain freedom from that law. In order for this voluntary heart to come out, it is not me that should become the center, but the object partner should become the center. When living for the sake of others becomes the center, my heart is bound to voluntarily well up all the time. However, if all motivation, motivations and beginnings become self-centered or you are reluctantly dragged by others, it easily becomes a passive, habitual, and conditional life. If we look at the history of the providence of restoration so far, since believers who formed reciprocal relationship with the Holy Spirit always had a voluntary heart, they were always centered on God and centered on others rather than themselves. Their heart always welled up. So the Holy Spirit made them realize that their heart belonged to heaven. Next. Faith in the era of Chanukah. The Israelites in the Old Testament had strong pride as the chosen people through their laws and rituals. However, in the New Testament era, they established a relative standard with God based on the belief that came from the voluntary hearts of believers. In the completed Testament age, God is trying to accomplish his will through people who evoke their own hearts from knowing heaven's circumstances, wills, and wishes, rather than the spirit world directly establishing and nurturing relative standards with them. The present age is an age in which actions must be made from the heart. Actions from the heart are actions that have already passed the law. Believers in the completed Testament age, centered on their voluntary hearts, understand other circumstances around them well, give for others, have harmonious relationships with others, and consider others as better than themselves. Yes. Today, we have uh, passed the Old Testament age and are living in the era of the Chanelgu. This age is an age when we must become the owners of this age and grow our spirit well ourselves. We directly receive the education and the blessing from true parents, and there are all kinds of textbooks so that we can learn and grow on our own. Therefore, today's age is not an age in which the spirit, spirit world directly forms reciprocal relationship and not just us uh, like uh, in the Old Testament age and New, New Testament age. 
among the spirit that have come and gone so far, no one has lived passing the formation stage and growth stage and entering the completion stage. And they have never received the blessing or met the true parent. Therefore, they are by no means in the position or place to guide us blessed families. My brothers and sisters, this is a very important point. Those who already pass away, they become, you know, our ancestors. They never know God. They, ne they never heard about the divine principle. They never met God. They never, you know, guided by true parents. But we receive the blessing. We, we know to have any parent. We already have the divine principle. We receive the blessing. We got a salvation. You know, through parents that gave the title, the tribal messiahship. <clears throat> Which one is uh, spiritually the, the level higher than us? No one. That's why anyone pass away early, they cannot do anything with us. Because our position higher than any spirit. Even Father said, more than, more than ever for sage, for sages. That's why in the Computer Testament era we, and also the Chanilinguk era, we are the one highest level. That's why you need to take ownership because spiritual world can help, but you can't, they cannot dominate us. Very important point. That's why in Computer Testament era and the Chanilinguk era, we already know everything. We, can, we have a chance to hear directly through parents' word. We have a divine principle and Chen Song Gyeong and Pyeong Hwa Gyeong. You know, all the textbook. In all the Testament era, they do not know what's going on. And the New Testament era, you know, all people do, do not know what's going on. We, we have a very clear answer. And we are attending through parents directly. Who can control us? No one can control us. That's why we need to take ownership as the owner of the channel group. Nobody guide us. And then, you know, I know uh, that one, <laughs> uh, some spirit, uh, some uh, was a spiritual mediator saying that I ask, who helped me most from spiritual world? Do you think that our ancestors or which one? What Jesus or what? And then she's just saying that, Dr. Yong, wow. Do you know who helped you the most? Of course, God helped you. Who helped you most? Those who passed away. Okay, those who passed away as a blessed couple. They all of them come to you and help you, not your own ancestors. I was so surprised. When I think about principally, that's true. That's true. Those who pass away as a 36 couple, 72 couple, those who already know true parents and passed away. And then they come to me and help me. <laughs> Therefore, my brothers and sisters, God is trying to accomplish his will through the people who evoke their own heart from the knowing heaven's circumstances, wills, and wishes. The present age on age in which actions must be made from the heart. Actions from the heart are actions that have already passed the law, centered on their voluntary, voluntary heart, and members of the era of the channel group must un understand other circumstances around us well. Give for the sake of others have a harmonious relationship with others and consider others as better than ourselves. Next. Faith in channel group and how to deal with people. After you have passed the faith of foundation of faith at the formation stage, and the faith of foundation of substance at the growth stage, you must know how to deal with others with good discernment. Treating someone with coldness can be loving that person. 
treating cold hearted people with coldness and those who will appreciate you with appreciation comes from assessing the other person. You can't cover things up and be humble to anyone. This is because there are people who want to take advantage of you. So you must be good at discernment. Otherwise, you will get attacked and lose yourself. People say that they consider others better than themselves for self-growth. However, can I just cover things up and treat just anyone as better than me? It can be confusing and ambiguous if you cover things up and say that anyone is better than you. This is because you are not subject to anyone's control. It's not about letting Satan control you. Satan works using a human face, so it is important to distinguish well. Yeah. Even through the era of the order of the Chun Ilgu has come, we should pass the fate of the foundation of the fate at the growth, at the formation stage, at the fate of the foundation of substance at the growth stage. After passing these standards, you need to know how to deal with others with good uh, discernment. Treating someone with coldness can be loving that person. Treating cold-hearted people with coldness and those who will appreciate, uh, appreciate you with appreciation comes from assessing the other person. You can't cover things up and be humble to anyone. For people who live self-centeredly, you should treat them coldly. Since there are many self-centered people who try to take advantage, advantage of others, you should discern them the level uh, headily and treat them coldly. When we see others, we must distinguish whether they are someone who are centered on themselves or live for the sake of others. You need to distinguish whether the other person is uh, someone with uh, pure motives or someone who try to take advantage of others. Otherwise, you will get attacked and lose yourself. If you are told to treat others as better than yourself, can I just cover things up and treat just anyone as better than, than me? It can be confusing and ambiguous, ambiguous if you cover things up and say that anyone is better than you. That, uh, this is because you are not subject to anyone's control. We cannot throw ourselves away and, and let Satan dominate me. Satan walk, walks using a human face. So it is important to distinguish very well this, how to distinguish good and evil. Very important, my brothers and sisters. Next. Leaders must be able to discern and see people well. You must be able to discern people well. Leaders need to see people as they are. You must not put on a mask in order to witness or ask anyone to come to church. Sometimes you must test whether you have an attachment to the truth and true things, even though some people are subjected to harsh criticism. Sometimes you need to know how to scorn a self-centered person in order to raise them. What standard are you living on right now? Are you people whose first love is extinguished? Is the fire of your first love still a lit? Heaven looks at whether you worry about yourself or if you seem to be a promising prospect. From heaven's eyes, there are too many believers who worry. When you first enter the church, God directly sets the standard for you until he calls you. But it is difficult for those who have lost their first love to overcome, no matter how hard they try. Not even prayer vigils or fasting work. God does not try to raise us in such a low-key way. We need that kind of faith as a child. You must know immediately what kind of leaders God wants in this completed Testament age. Thank you, Heavenly Honey. You must be able to discern people well. Leaders need to see people as they are. Even when witnessing, you, you cannot try to witness to just anyone. 
Sometimes you must test whether you have an attachment to the truth and true things, even though some people are subject to, subject to harsh criticism. Sometimes you need to know how to scorn a self-centered person in order to raise them. When you first enter the church and until he calls you, God directly sets the reciprocal relationship for you based on the heart that was touched. However, if you lose your first love, it cannot be restored by low standard ways of the prayer vigils and or fasting like, a, or like in the Old Testament age and New Testament age. When our faith is dead off, a young child is like a information stage of faith. We need to we need to fasting, prayer, vigils, offering, or some ritual and system. However, in the era of the Chinese group, we have we have to voluntarily and grow and our heart on our own. This is a very important point now. You know, spiritual world, our ancestors, of course, they can help. They, you know, they can help us, you know, cooperate with us. But we need to know that we are owner of the channel group. We are higher than any other, our ancestor spirit, in terms of position, in terms of value of the blessing, how much precious we are. We need to know that now we are entering only the God's completion, which is the era of the channel group. What era of the channel group requires? Your volunteer heart, not subjugated by any other spirit. You need to have the volunteer heart as the owner of the channel group. Today, I talk about the attitude of the faith in the era of the channel group and how to raise the people. The attitude of the faith in the era of the channel group and how to raise the people, right? My brothers and sisters, thank you so much. And uh, tomorrow early morning in Korean time, I am going back to my beloved country, America. See you very soon over there. 감사합니다. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Young, for that wonderful message this morning. Um, about the more we understand the sorrow of God, the stronger the power of the unifi Unification Church becomes. That's what really struck out to me today, so thank you. And now for our living testimony, it will be given by Dr. Luone Ruz, who is the national co-chair of ACLC and who just returned from Korea. So please take it away. Thank God, thank Jesus, thank the Holy Spirit, thank true parents for making it real for us to realize the kingdom of God here on earth. What a treasure. We must express a deep gratitude to Dr. Young for having ACLC so well prepared. It is the first time that I have experienced such preparation for those of us who joined the heavenly family of the Federation and all of the participants that would come not only to the summit of 2022 and the leadership conference, but also to unite with Dr. Young in prayer at the most crucial experience of time during our visit in Korea, unexpected. After our prayer breakfast, we were able to join him and Champion and go to the prayer room and experience such a powerful movement of the Holy Spirit that many were speaking in tongues. Others were just short, crying out, shouting to God. And with such love of God, we also experienced true love through Dr. Young taking us to a sincere meal, not only then, but about three times during our visit there, making sure that we were well taken care of. I want to say this to you because it's important for us to be with Dr. Young and all that he has done for America at this time. Our experience in Korea was about the leadership conference 
in knowing that we were able to have an opportunity to unite with UPF and others in working for peace on the Korean Peninsula and working towards world peace throughout the globe. That as the woman in charge, the only begotten daughter, true mother is leading and guiding us. We witness there in Korea that political leaders are beginning to understand on all of the continents and all of the countries that have been sharing with her and maybe others that are to come are hearing consistently from her this message of true love, true life, and true lineage. And we're beginning to have many who are non-believers believing. We are beginning to have many who are believers believe even deeper in the reality that it can happen here and now. That's what it is about. That's what our journey was about. And it started not just on the Korean Peninsula. That's why it's important for us to listen to Dr. Young. Dr. Young, your morning devotions have prepared us. You're encouraging us to study over again the divine principle it prepared us. On the journey, on the plane, Dr. Edwards and I went through this manual again. We didn't sleep on this. We want to be ready when we got there on the peninsula and we were ready, we are ready. And we are back in America, ready to encourage everyone to study. Wow. Yeah, our experience there included hearing true mother and witnessing the leaders come together to understand. Let me tell you something. I had my badge with me, and then at a special time that I did not know, I received with others the, the, the medal from celebrating the 60 years of the performances of the little angel. And I put my badge in this beautiful case with, with, with that medal. So the next day, I didn't have my badge on and forgot where I left it. But the love of God and the grace of God is so prevalent that just as Antonio Baldwin was willing to share his ties with me so I could have ties in, in Korea, Joshua's wife, Mrs. Holmes, Takayo Holmes, was giving up her badge to make sure that I could get in, that we could meet with True Mother. That's what True Love Family is about, looking out for one another, and then God intervenes and brings us to the point where it works out for all of us in the sacredness of time. Not all of the experience went without event, event. Our beloved Reverend Hernandez contracted COVID once we went to the CIG in Champion, but God is blessing us and he is recovering well. But the many of us continued to pray for the few who had COVID and the few prayed for the many who continue to experience the reality that True Mother is leading us to a more perfect world. Let us encourage all people to unite with us and do as the American representatives did when we were before True Mother, hearing the presentations from all of the continents. And I wanna tell you something, there Dr. Young went again. <laughs> He came through with such a powerful presentation that it ignited our hearts and our souls. And Dr. Edwards and I sitting by each other just kept elbowing each other every point that he would make and talking. We started making notes about what we would do in union with him when we got back to America. But then the Americans, they started off that presentation and they ended pretty much the event on the last day doing an old monkey song for many of us. I'm a believer. They got everybody in the auditorium dancing and going. And they once again came in first place because at the end they brought all of the continent's leaders together. You talking about America uniting the world? 
Yes, we are ready. So mm -hmm. I invite you as we continue, Reverend Enose and your wife, Marie and I love you deeply. We thought about you through the whole experience because the experience also contained mm -hmm. our concern for Japan. Mm -hmm. We're not only going to Africa, but we're praying to go to Japan. We're praying to go wherever God will lead us. And Dr. Young, lead us now to the next steps. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Rouse. I am really proud of you. You really leading the our ACLC members very, very in Korea. I am so much happy because you are cooperating very well. Thank you so much. Next time, let's bring more of our ACLC minister to Korea to see our Mother Moon and also Father Lamb. Thank you very much, Dr. Rouse. And sooner or later, we can make more detailed plan. Kamsahamida. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ross. That was an amazing testimony. Oh, definitely inspired. So thank you for sharing that with all of us. And thank you, Dr. Young, for your wonderful message this morning. So let us all go into our breakout sessions and share our takeaways with one another from today's talk and today's testimony. And we'll be back soon.
Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I hope you enjoyed your breakout. Um, so first up, I would like to invite the Bowman family and Carp. Um, I saw them earlier, and I would love to hear your takeaways today. Thanks, Rebecca. We knew it was coming. It was fine. Wow, Bowman family. Why, why, why is there are so many people? What, what, what's going on over there? <laughs> we, have, uh, we have Marilyn Carp here at our, our house for the next couple of days. Oh, They're fundraising for their busy activities. Oh, I don't know who's captain. I think they switched captains and everything like that. <laughs> so, yeah, we we had a really good breakout room. It was quite interesting. Uh, but uh, basically, what we got, well, at least my sharing point that I got from basically morning devotion was, you know, sexual immorality is basically the downfall to most families or basically any nation as it goes along. And basically, making sure that you have good families good people and do things in the proper way will always basically serve you well and bring blessings in your life at least that's what i got on my wow. um, units <laughs> uh, my takeaway is from the youth ministry we only have discerned people i think it means that like as a trying leader as like a leader in general you have to learn how to ex not just be like that you know know how to say what's needed to be said in order to raise up people and i think that's like a quality of like the true leader not just saying like oh what people want to hear but really like saying what needs to be said so they can really become like greater leaders themselves so that's my main takeaway good boy good boy all right anyone uh i i was the designated babysitter <laughs> <laughs> Takeaway, you want to show them the picture? It's a very pretty picture that Claire uh, put together. Uh, it's a very interesting buddy. Uh, okay, thank you. Any other line? Uh, I have a similar takeaway with Mitsuyoshi, where uh, learning about the sermon and having the right attitude to not let anyone take subject over you, but to know how to recognize and um, recognize. You know what okay. you know who are like when to be humble but also when to be strong and mm -hmm. say the right things at the right time i think it's yeah. a very good and clear strength of a leader that i need to work on so okay. i appreciate uh, that, that part of the youth ministry yeah okay from hawaii <laughs> <laughs> Oh, me too. I love you too. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you so much. <laughs> yeah. Um, my takeaway was simply, I think, like these past couple of morning devotions, you're emphasizing like how important it is to understand like the heart of God, and that's actually like I, the more I think about it, it's like the core of everyone's faith is like growing that personal relationship with God, and that affects like how you view. Those around you, how you live for the sake of others, and yeah, I also really like the youth ministry as well. Uh, <laughs> so thank you. Okay, thank you, Semun from Hawaii. <laughs> Anybody? That's it. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. God bless you all, come members. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. It was lovely hearing all of your insights. It's always nice to hear the younger generation speaking up and hearing their testimonies and their take takeaways. So thank you for taking on that responsibility today. <laughs> so now for our friendly reminders. Number one is to invite someone, someone from your Trinity or family or community. And I'm sure you'll be glad that you did. It's always wonderful to see new faces with our returning ones. So please feel free to invite whoever you can. And number two, our content summaries and link to images are available on edu.familyfed.org, courtesy of Dr. Kylie, and it will be in the chat as well. So number three is joyfully give from your heart, offer a song, a prayer, and see how God may inspire you to give back a little more to Morning Heart Devotion or even your own community. And again, there will be a link in the chat. If you'd like to email Tal about offering a prayer or a song, please do. It's lovely to hear new talent and hear people's hearts opening up our morning devotion every day. And now for our musical offering, I'd like to invite um, 
Chris Bahari to please unmute and share with us. Good morning. Good morning and welcome back, America, Dr. Yong. Hi, okay, Bihari, okay. I was going to present a, a, a video that I did, uh, like, uh, uh, you know, a movie maker thing, but I'm having problems with my computer. So I just have to sing a holy song this morning. And the reason is, is that recently this year and reading uh, a divine principle two times a month, plus every day, the one hour, I really find it that I'm singing holy songs in my sleep and that I wake up in the morning singing a holy song. So I'm so grateful uh, that, uh, you know, both in the awaking world and the sleeping world, I've been uh, singing praises. So I want to sing a, a holy song this morning. Sing aloud, Hosanna to the Lord, offer everything with humble heart. Come attend the Lord, oh rejoice in him who sings his song to all the world. Let us go determined to seek and find all the promised glory of the Lord. They will sing new songs in the garden fair, songs of freedom bright with happiness. They will sing new songs in the garden fair, songs of freedom bright with happiness. There are clouds of darkness on the path. Sinful night enveloping the land. Brush the clouds aside and behold the light that shines in beauty everywhere. Oh, oh. Let us go determined to seek and find all the world of joyfulness and peace. They will sing the songs in the garden, songs of freedom bright with happiness. They will sing the songs in the garden, songs of freedom bright with happiness. Ho, ho. Oh, my brothers, all rejoice today. You sing the song of our new life. Offer praise on high, blessed forevermore as chosen people of the Lord. Oh, oh. Let us go determined to seek and find all the brilliant glory of our dreams. There will sing new songs in the God and fair songs of freedom, bright with happiness. They will sing new songs in the garden, sir. Songs of freedom, bright with happiness. Oh, oh. We uphold the standard of the Lord to be so his true ideal. Freely give your love, share the Father's joy, and beauty will return to you. Oh. Let us go determined to seek and find all the promised glory of the Lord. They will sing new songs in the garden, say songs of freedom, bright with happiness. They will sing new songs in the garden, fair songs of freedom, bright with happiness. Everyone, they will sing new songs in the garden, fair songs of freedom, bright with happiness. Whoa, 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 whoa! Rapper Bihari, bravo, bravo, bravo! Such a joyful song! With your happy heart. Thank you, Bihari. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. You're always so bright and happy with you when you sing, and it just like fills me up with joy. So thank you for sharing that with us this morning. <laughs> so now to close us off in prayer, I would like to invite up uh, Kenji-san.
So please unmute and pray for us. Can you join me a prayer? Dear yeah, brothers and sisters, we so appreciate Tsuru Mother led successfully our Tsuru Father's 10th anniversary. We really reflect such a great battle Father made through, together with Tsuru Mother and all the brothers and sisters. Now is a really final time we really put all together together under the ship of Tsuru Mother, one with her. Through that, we really bring a miracle of the miracle, which is we are waiting for human history after Jesus ascended 2,000 years. But please give us the courage or the education given by given through Dr. Yam. We really need to practice and bring the result. So that is that way we can truly celebrate every parents. Thank you so much for the daily guidance. We really appreciate and love you. And please guide throughout the week for the brothers and sisters. I report and pray our name, Kenji and Taiko Wokawa, Abre Center family. Amen. And Aju. Thank you, Kenji san. Kamsa today. Your suit and necktie really well harmonized. Wow, thank you, you know how to wear. Wow, thank you so much, Kenji san. Kamsamida. Thank you so much for closing us off, Kenji san. It was a beautiful prayer. Thank you. And thank you to everyone this morning for joining, all the people who shared the testimony that was given. Having your spirit here is wonderful. And we'll see you all tomorrow morning. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you my brothers and sisters. God bless you.